Well, it's a little after 8 o'clock on a Monday. Work day's over. Time to... I'm thinking rip apart the stock bottom end. Get the crank cleaned up, block cleaned up, ready to get the crank balanced, and here we go. Got a part like a jerk, but those are out. I'm gonna take this stupid damper off and then it'll just start flying apart. Well, once again, disassembling it like an absolute barbarian, but it's going pretty well. Things look pretty good. Bearings are clearly worn. There's a couple with some copper showing, but yeah, look at that. Tired, but not dead. That's all we need.
see what RJ's doing with the balance. Oh man, what do we got? Is it gonna work? Oh, yes sir. Weighing out all our rotating assembly. Nice. I've got all the pistons weighed. I can set up this fixture here and we can weigh all our rods. Put her on the dew dangler. A dew dangler. Look at those eagle performance beauties, my goodness. All the horsepower. I just see this part number. CRS. All the old guys come in here and say, I got a case of CRS. Can't remember stuff. <laughs> oh, that one's a little light compared to our 467. Oh, man. To grind all these turds down now. Like I said, I think I was going to big weld on that one to make it heavier. <laughs> Grind all these down. I'll just make the light ones heavier. Screw it. You yeah, you two would love that. It's time to get those heads welded up. So I snuck over to the heavy equipment repair site because I got a bigger welder. So what I'm going to do now is, let me flip you around. So I'm going to take my trusty carbide here and I'm going to chamfer up where are we? Chamfer out the edges of these holes and then I will get them in the oven, get them preheated, get the TIG set up, we're gonna weld them in, I'm gonna use the hammer to kinda of peen the aluminum in and relieve it and kinda of make that aluminum denser. So here we go. Alright. As you can see I've just dramatically laid back the edges of all this coolant hole just to give me a place to start welding because I don't know if you know this I suck at welding so got them all laid out now I'm gonna heat them up let them cook got her set at uh 250 something should do it there goes nothing Here are the poor results. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll see how full of pores and terribleness they are. I imagine I just all this twice. The boys have got the Ford block align honed now. See the caps look different. We sandblast caps before we put them on the cap grinder to get everything square and to take some dimension out of here on the cap which makes us now undersized. And then Chad grabs a mandrel, puts it on the old power drill, runs it through. If you look at all the surfaces here, they look nice and honed now. So that stock crank should have a nice straight platform to lay in before we uh, beat the crap out of it. What I've got here is an extra block I've had kicking around 
and while the other block is almost done in the hoeing over there and all that stuff, fair to get this one out, get the heads on it, and my buddy Scott chopped the intake manifold in half for me. So we'll mock up the manifold and start seeing how much of a disaster it's going to be to get that to fit. So got some new gaskets, and with that welding I did, the boys resurfaced the heads. They look fantastic. And I think we're going to have just enough coolant flow in all the right places and head bolt holes and such. Let's get that down there. Oh, yeah. I think we're good to go. So I'll slam the other head on here and we'll see how the intake runners look and how much work that's going to be. These are those three inch generic half inch 13 ARP bolts I bought. Not technically a head bolt, but they're going to be now. Well, boys and girls, we have some misalignment. There is quite a distance there. So I get a side view of it. So we're going to have to trim as much as possible next to this runner hole and add some on here to kind of get an average of flatness. But man, it's starting to look pretty serious. Since this started, I realized I had my old intercooler for my Suburban engine, and I've got another Universal Holly flange, so if all goes well, we'll put this thing on here. Take the lid off. In theory, that is not a good idea one-handed. I'll take my 417 Motorsports cooler from the Suburban debacle. And then we'll put this lid on it. And now we are talking. Here's the plan, got some strips for filler right down the old middle there so it doesn't try to pull it together too bad. And now we just got to melt the crap out of it. We snuck back into the big shop so we can use the big boy welder because this is going to take some juice. Tacky tacky. Okay, well, got our tack down through. Shouldn't pull too bad, I think. I mean, it's got material. 
I so we just gonna go good. I'm just gonna send it. Melt it in. Oh, yeah. Okay, well. Let's send it here. Bye. Here's where we're at. Scott laid down some beautiness down the middle. I've bolted the end caps to this uh, holly flange and we've ground the edge down so we can get them to fit. So now what we're going to do is get the flange lined up. We've cut the front and rear edge off the manifold. You can see how short that is now next to the inlet of that runner. We're going to get this all laid on flat and square. And we should be able to tack us a new top.